Okay, so um, <clears throat> as promised here is uh, look into some of my process uh, for doing these facial captures. Uh, next week I'll do um, something a little more in depth on the, the rig itself and uh, talk about displacement maps and hooking up a network of them to uh, develop uh, wrinkle maps. But anyway, so this is uh, Face Shift. It's a program that I purchased a license for, uh, a non-commercial license for uh, about two years ago, three years ago when I took head and facial expressions. And uh, it works great. I have a Prime Sense camera, which uh, was recently, per Carmen was re recently bought by Apple, I believe. And what it does is it reads the depth, as you can see. So you can see down here, <clears throat> a 3D scan reading the depth of my face. Uh, this is the video here. And what they give you is a 3D model and inside it's Python based uh, code. Uh, it's linked to this shape here and what it'll do is it has these uh, generic, well not, well, I guess they're generic, but a base model with a base amount of shapes. Now I can alter these and I am working on doing that so that it better matches my rig and my blend shapes that I use but for here this is for demonstration purposes we can just look at this. So what you have here is uh, a series of facts based blend shapes on this generic model and what you do to set up your model here in FaceShip is you use this button here and so I'd press that and I would capture so I've captured a neutral pose here so what I could do is build that pose out and as you can see the program is altering the model to better match my face and <clears throat> so now the neutral pose has been captured and you can see what it looks like right here and let's see let me do one more to show that I'll do open and then I'll go ahead and build that particular pose. Normally what I'd do is I'd go through all of the expressions <clears throat> and you would have my particular face modeled here in 3D. It's really kind of cool how they did it. Um, you can view uh, different display options here. Uh, you can do wireframe, show the model in the scan so you can get an idea. Uh, fitting quality so you can see uh, blue is pretty good you know green is in between and uh, red shows problem areas so shadow probably from my mustache or whatever uh, uh, is, is causing an issue right there you can look at uh, texture it's quite frightening look at it on the scan so there you go and let's see, so I'm just going to load a uh, load a scan that I have already had. Okay, sorry about that. I am back and I figured it out. I was just pressing the wrong button. Happens. But uh, anyway, here you are. I have loaded my scans on my face. So uh, you can see I have all these different facial expression. So what face shift does is it will then in turn uh, you go over into this tracking mode here. Here we are. You can uh, see how it is looking at various points on the face and tracking those movements. And depending on how good your blend shapes are you can get some pretty realistic stuff. I mean uh, not in this program you can't get very realistic but with your blend shapes over in Maya, if this makes sense, 
you can get some pretty good motions because as you can see I got all kinds of stuff going on in my jaw and uh, they're doing their base model doesn't have a lot of movement up in the, the up because the jaw connects here and comes down so you should see some movement where it is actually dislocating and stuff uh, I'm not gonna get into all that but anyway you should see that movement in your blend shape and you don't see that in theirs but you can if you have good blend shapes see that in your model uh, when you go into Maya and do the uh, the connection between the two while you're doing your performance um, so in this mode here this is the tracking mode what we do is uh, always get into decent position you want to be in the green uh, so that it, it, it reads the depth as best it can and you want to capture a neutral or first what I want to do is orient my head as you can see here um, alright so now my head's oriented so when I'm turning it's giving me a zero point so we're looking good there and I have Maya running in the background here um, let me just quickly go over this real fast so this is my Countess rig um, uh, like I said next week I'll go into the details of the rig because that's a little bit more detail than I want to get into it at the moment but so uh, this is my GUI where I can I've demonstrated that these are brow movements I've demonstrated that on my other characters so what happens is phase shift uh, can connect via this live streaming port here and it can run your model inside of Maya and what you do is you it builds uh, a node inside of Maya based on those shapes that you have pre-recorded inside of uh, phase shift as you saw earlier and what it'll do is once you go through each expression on your rig like if I wanted a neutral pose I grab the neutral pose on my model and I load all of these this GUI inside of the node down here and set a neutral pose by doing that and what it does is it sets a key set driven key on all of these so that that it knows the system knows that's zero and then I can go down through the expression I'd go to the next one that's my uh, left eyebrow down so I would use my GUI set that position click on that save that pose and now it's set another set driven key on there so all these poses are in here so what it'll do is it'll read all these different expressions on my model and try to translate one for one from phase shift over to my model and that's how it records the performance I hope that makes sense unfortunately uh, as a, I I have way more blend shapes than what they have uh, just this Countess model alone uh, I have nearly almost 81 blend shapes for her so it you know it can be as elaborate as you want or as simple as you want depending on what you want to get and I tend to lean towards the more elaborate just because that's I'm a nut job when it comes to that stuff so I end up creating probably more than I need especially for face shift but I have recently uh, been dabbling in the toolkit for phase shift and once I figure out all the code with help from phase shift I'll be able to use my blend shapes and I won't be limited to their expressions I will have it'll be basically over here what you'll have is all my shapes so all 80 something shapes will be in here and I'll get a better performance a better capture and better translation to my model over here in uh, Maya so enough talking let's take a look at uh, what this looks like so um, if I hit the live stream button here connect I'll turn this off 
So, hello, how are you? <laughs> so, you can see how ridiculous this is. It is recording me. My blinks, my moves. You're an idiot. I know, pretty sad. But that's how it works. Let's see. Pretty silly, but pretty fun, I gotta admit. Um, so that's a pretty much in a nutshell how it works. I would just record a performance here by hitting this button. You are an idiot. And then stop it. And then you can go back over here to Maya. So you can see that it it gives me a base performance to start with and then I can go down through and if I see some problems like right here on my eye you know I'd want to uh, adjust how it is it'll make a a little bit it'll make some refinements as you can see refining around the frames and I'll get a better capture of that eye going forward and then when I'm done and I'm happy with all my corrections I've gone through the frames and made any fixes that I wanted to I would hit refine and it'll go down through and it'll smooth out some of the keys that it captures for incidental uh, stuff that I don't want to see like as you can as you can imagine there are a lot of small movements that it captures you want to definitely get rid of those so I think that's about it. This is long enough. Um, that is an intro, really quick intro into how I do my motion capture side of my projects.